clearly a lot of risk out there. But should it be all fear, or can even the most bearish among us find reasons to buy? Joining us now is Charles Schwab, Chief Global Investment Strategist, Jeffrey Kleintop. So, Jeff, we're going to kind of walk through reasons to buy, reasons to sell. I, I want to start with the good news. Hey, it's 5.30 in the morning, right? If you had to make the bull case for equities anywhere in the world, the green light, what would you say? I'd have to say there's the possibility of fiscal stimulus, maybe tax cuts in Europe, maybe even Japan this year. That was something that really made a difference for the U.S. last year. But this year, even as the U.S.-China trade war doesn't really touch Europe, they are looking at an economic slowdown. Germany has the capacity through a massive budget surplus to cut corporate taxes. We're hearing this elsewhere. France's uh, Macron, who just suffered a, a big setback in the EU parliamentary elections, may look to unveil uh, tax cuts. He's already talked about it. I think Australia's already passed them. The Netherlands Netherlands is discussing them. Japan's actually talking about hiking taxes later this year. Maybe they'll push that off. So fiscal stimulus, we don't have a lot of room for monetary stimulus, but that could be a help that's unlooked for at the, at the present and, time. And that would be, Jeff, I know just because we've talked in the past, that would be a reason to buy equities in Europe, not equities here, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I think that that would uh, likely boost their economies and, and certainly it would be also something that would help to lift their growth at a time where the other two world's largest superpowers, the U.S. and China, are kind of undermining each other. All right. Let's call it the yellow light. Reason to pause. Sometimes maybe not doing anything is the smartest move of all. If there was a reason to just kind of tell your clients, hey, Sit tight. Don't take any drastic action. Don't buy. Don't sell. Just let's wait this out. What would that be, Jeff? Well, this is often the best advice, but I think it's the fact that central banks are aware of the yield curve you just mentioned. Jay Powell told us to keep an eye on it. He's keeping an eye on it. Other central bankers around the world are not continuing to tighten monetary policy into what's already a slowing global economy. We've seen leading indicators like the Purchasing Managers Index or leading indicators from the OECD continue to point downward, but central banks are acknowledging this. And now, in fact, there's some expectation that the Fed may be cutting rates later this year. That's a good sign that central bankers, probably the most effective policymakers, are aware of the problem. All right, well, obviously, futures are down. The markets have been weak. We're still higher on the year, by the way. Important to note that. But it's been a weak May. What's the red light? What's the reason to get out of certain stocks in the United States, the reason to sell, Jeff? You know, one of them is yesterday's consumer confidence number. It was good. The University of Michigan number was very strong. It's not the only one. There's one from the conference board, a few others. They're all really high right now, and that sounds like a good thing. Strong consumer means good growth for the economy and for profits. But usually these high levels of confidence precede periods of trouble. We last saw these numbers in 07, the last time we saw the yield curve inverted as well, and then back in 2000, and you can go back prior to that as well, and see these periods of high degrees of confidence by consumers tended to precede periods of mm -hmm. trouble in the markets and for the economy as a whole. So that's a bit of a red light for me, those strong, uh, robust consumer numbers we got yesterday. You know, we showed our viewers just before this segment that inversion you talked. Now, the big inversion, the big inversion, of course, is the two-year note and the 10-year note. That's sort of the biggie. Those are the ones that you say, well, that predicted all the recessions, seven of the last seven or whatever it is. We're showing the three-month and the 10-year. So not quite as severe, but are you worried about that chart right there, Jeff? I am. I think this is an important signal, uh, not just because it's telling us maybe what the Fed's expected to do or where inflation's headed, but because it, it really is a good gauge of global financial conditions. Uh, this is something that's worked not only in the U.S., but internationally. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's sniffed out peaks in the EFI index since 1969 when we get this inversion of the three-month and 10-year. It's usually right around the peak within a few months of the peak of the EFI index as well. So even though I talk more favorably about European equities, the yield curve is something to watch both for the U.S. and the rest of the world.